trait prompt. So we are recording the webinar from here on out. And um, let's see, next slide. I believe I'm handing this over to Natha for um, our agenda today. Thanks, Ashley. Um, so a welcome to all of you from Natha Dempsey here at FBI. A quick run through of our very short high level agenda. Um, first, we're gonna do some staff introductions for those of you who have not met us either in person or over Zoom prior. Um, we're gonna talk about FPI's governance, how things work around here and, and how, how we get our marching orders as a staff. We're gonna talk about committees, divisions, and special interest groups. And then some of our member benefits and resources, as well as Jennifer's going to give us a lovely 101 primer on our conferences as we head into the spring conference. After that, we'll take some questions. Um, just in interest of full disclosure, we do not anticipate this webinar taking a full hour of your time. We are hopeful, even with good questions, that we will be able to hand you back some um, at the end of our, of our webinar today. So next slide, please. There we go. We've got some photos this time around. Um, I'm Natha Dempsey. I am the president of FPI going on four years now. I have been with FPI for 13 years and in the packaging world for 23. Um, those of you who have met me before know that I do a little bit of this and a little bit of that with a small association of our size. Um, I am your primary membership person. I am also the main spokesperson, not the only spokesperson, but the main spokesperson for our organization and our industry, um, as well as your communications uh, go-to. I also run the supplier division for those of you that fall into our supplier world, um, as well as a number of other things. Again, we're trying to keep this very high level. With that, I'm gonna pass it back over to Ashley to sort of introduce herself and then on through the FPI staff. Yep, hi all, um, Ashley Elzinga. I'm the Director of Sustainability and Outreach for FPI. Um, I've been on staff for four years and I previously come from Dark Container where I was there for um, four years as well. Um, so I manage our special interest groups, which um, I'll be talking a little about um, later, and then um, all the, you know, the newsletters that we send out, specifically executive briefs, and then the packaging innovations and insights. You might have seen me sent out requests for submissions. Um, I do a lot of our reports and our surveys, such as the state of the industry and our trends report. Um, I do run the egg and trade division and um, also our statistics program. Um, as well. So I will hand it over to Jennifer to introduce herself. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. I am Jennifer Goldman. I am the Director of Meetings and Operations here at FPI, and I handle conferences, which we will be talking about, accounting, which is invoicing. So you'll be getting those things for me and following up on those invoices, website and social media. And I will now pass along to Carol Patterson. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Jennifer. Yeah, Carol Patterson. I lead government relations here at FPI. And you'll hear a little bit more about those activities later in the presentation. But really, everything relating to our government activities, including our committee work and all of the reports and information that we send out to you. So. With that, I think I'm sending it back to Natha. Probably. Thanks, Carol. Um, so a little bit about FPI's governance. Um, our association is a member-based association, and our members are corporate members. All of our supplier and converter members um, have one vote in association business decisions. This is typically what we call your primary member. We have primary and alternate members. Those are the, the primary representatives for your company, but it does not have to be. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about our member meetings, I believe, in just a moment. But all member companies have one vote on things like budget or board nominations and elections, changes to our bylaws. And you know, when those come up, they typically come either by email or they're taken care of in our member meetings. Um, we are a 
corporate membership here at FPI, meaning your company is actually the member, not you as individuals. Uh, the benefit here is, is that any member of your company, any direct participant representative of your company may participate at FPI. Um, our board of directors, we take our marching orders from our board of directors. They provide our strategic guidance for the association. They meet twice a year in person, and then we have more meetings virtually as needed. So how do you become a member of the board of directors? Good news, um, this is open to anyone who would care to run. Uh, you have to be a converter or supplier member. Um, you have to be nominated, which you can self-nominate. Um, and then the elections, after the elections take place, you're elected to a two-year term. Uh, and this process takes care takes place every fall. So in the fall, your primary and alternate members will get a ballot. Well, they'll first get the nomination sheet and then the ballot. And that is how things are taken care of. That one vote, again, one vote per company for our board of directors. Um, our board of directors has approximately 13 members and is a mix. Our, you know, ideally, we want a mix of materials and size types and all kinds of um, representation. So we want a good, solid, holistic mix of our industry represented at the board level from that supplier and converter space. Responsibilities on the board include helping to establish future priorities for FPI. We want to be you know, in the now, living in the present, but also future looking. And based on our strategic plan, which FPI renews every five years, we work from that strategic plan to develop annual focus areas um, that we work on every year. So with the board, FPI staff, you know, develops those and then we, we proceed from there. Um, the board provides feedback on our activities and projects. They help with member recruitment and retention. Some of them are very, very good at that. Um, and they assist in developing our budget and our dues structure and any sort of policy changes. So it's not a little, little bit of, of um, work we're asking for from our board. Uh, they, are, they are heavily involved in the association and we appreciate each and every one of them. So um, meet twice a year at our conferences and then we meet virtually as needed after that as mentioned prior. And then any vacancies are actually filled in the fall. So if someone retires or leaves their company, their seat stays vacant until the fall election again. So committees and divisions, this is where most of our members can get involved. What are committees, committees and divisions? They're probably exactly what you think they are. Um, we have several committees that um, work on a fairly regular basis. I think the most active would probably be our government relations committee at this point. Carol is our staff lead and she'll speak more about this in a moment. Um, we have a technical committee. Uh, this would be Ashley and myself who, who play in that space. Um, this is an ad hoc committee at this point in time and it's based on what the project needs of the of the association are. So if there's a big project uh, that pops up in the technical space, then the committee will meet on a regular basis. If there isn't anything to work on, that committee goes dormant. Uh, we also have divisions. These are very frankly, old school associations that were absorbed into FPI many years ago. Our egg packaging division and food packaging trays division, each of those were an association in their own right. Um, and FPI took them on many years ago. This is why often you will see FPI including things like egg cartons and meat or produce trays in our work because of these associations that are now our division. This meets at the fall FPI conference and Ashley is the staff lead for that group. Um, and the supplier division, these are folks that are in our supplier space. So raw material suppliers um, on the both the paper and the plastic side, aluminum side, bio, whatever side, whatever our supplier community is, um, is working with in terms of raw materials, they are included in that group, as well as our machinery suppliers. So those folks that are helping to provide equipment to our converters, they also meet at the fall conference. 
And I am going to turn things back over to Carol to talk about the Government Relations Committee. Thank you. So now we're going to dig in just a little bit on the Government Relations Committee and what we do within that committee. First, I would highlight that it's open to all members that have an interest in hearing about what is happening uh, with government relations and the impacts on food service packaging. We meet, right now we're meeting every other month, but that frequency is determined annually by the committee members in terms of how often they would like to come together and get an update on legislation and local ordinances, and most recently, how implementation is going with EPR. And we discuss opportunities and coalitions that are taking place on the issues of importance and provide thoughts and comments to us. So it's intended to be an interactive committee where uh, we provide an overview of FPI's engagement, which is really based on approved strategies and prioritization from our board of directors. And we really look forward to hearing from folks in terms of where they would like to see us engaging and also just in terms of the type of engagement that we have. So we do have a meeting coming up next Tuesday. So if any of you are interested, certainly reach out and we'll get you on that committee invite. Um, and next we'll show you a few of the resources that get pushed out uh, relating to government relations. So on a monthly basis, we do send out our legislative and regulatory report, and it provides an update at all levels of government. Most of our efforts are focused at the state or provincial level, again, covering uh, US and Canada, but we do provide highlights of federal activity and of course, a lot about what's happening at the local level in terms of ordinances and bylaws and updating that Excel spreadsheet tracker, which is just a beast of a document. Um, but we hear all the time that it is a valuable resource to our members and uh, we make best efforts to track all that we can within that document. And of course, if there's anything that happens that requires immediate communication to folks in terms of government relations, we do send out member alerts as well. So that provides a bit of a snapshot of the resources you may already be receiving or could be receiving uh, from government relations at FBI. Okay. And I think this is my section, the special interest group. So um, we'll talk, I'll just talk quickly about what the um, special interest groups are. They are um, our paper recovery alliance, our plastic recovery group, our foam recycling coalition, and then our paper cup alliance. Um, these groups are groups are housed under the umbrella of FPI and were um, established for a specific purpose, mainly food service packaging recovery in those respective materials. Um, FPI members are um, welcome to join as appropriate if you guys have um, you know, an interest in food service packaging recovery. Um, these are self-funded and managed. So these are um, you know, a separate due structure than um, you know, the FPI um, membership. So, um, you know, if you are interested in the special interest groups, we do meet at, um, you know, our conferences twice in person per year. Um, those are, you know, for those members only. But um, if you are interested in a potential membership, um, though that is open and you can you can visit. Just let me know and um, I can get you get you um, onto to those um, registration links or lists. Um, and then a few of the member and benefits and resources that um, I do manage, I mentioned the pack packaging innovations and insights. Um, this is a monthly newsletter that is um, submitted for new to market products. Um, so these are products that are new to market. Unfortunately, we get asked if we promote awards or anything for, um, you know, um, specific packaging, if there was like a 
sustainability award or something or a green award. Um, unfortunately, we, we do not um, promote um, awards given just the new to market products. And um, the distribution list and the audience for this is um, over 700 readers. And then we also post um, this link on social media and then send it out over the wire as well to be picked up by um, other news organizations. Um, with that said, we do have um, our biannual every two years um, our a quick service restaurants and FPI awards competition. We just had an award year last year, so it's every odd year. So the next one will be um, in um, 2025. And so this is um, a chance for um, our members to showcase their innovations um, in, in their products that they're creating for their customers. Um, so this one is super fun. I love being involved in helping with this, um, with the packaging awards. So uh, we will send out requests um, in the summer of 2025 for uh, submissions. So I think this is Jennifer. Yes, it is. So FPI being the voice of the food service packaging industry needs a large communications channel. So obviously our largest is the FPI.org website. There are many resources on here for you and also for general public. We'll talk about that in a minute, how that specifically rolls out. There's too many things to mention. So I would implore you to please go on there and browse and take a look. We have many wonderful things on there to help promote the industry. And we have social media as well. Ashley was talking about packaging innovation and insights. And the important thing is there, if you are in that newsletter, you do get individually highlighted in a social media post. So we take a picture of your product and some of your submission language. We put that out on its own individual post and it gets seen by whomever likes us and follows us on that social media channel. So please keep that in mind. Now this particular one with the cute little sloth, that is not one for PII, but that's just an example of what we do. And uh, those that's probably just, I think that's skip the straw day or something like that. So we'll kind of do some little fun sprinkles of posts like that here and there. So anyway, please uh, make sure and get those submissions in and we'll get you a post out on social media. Okay, so moving on to the website itself and getting to the resources that are member specific. If you go on there and you are not logged in, you will go to the resources section, you will see many things are in gray. Those are members only documents. So if you are not logged in, you cannot get them. So what you need to do is go to the very top right corner and click log in. If you don't know your password, no problem. This picture is slightly blurry, but I think you can see what it says. Just click on forgot password and it will email you a password reset. And I must tell you that these often end up in spam. So please check that really quickly if you don't see it. And you can also just email me. I can manually reset you if you're having trouble, not an issue. Something else I do wanna mention that does happen with this website that hopefully we do get fixed one day is that there is a slight glitch sometimes when you log in it logs you out. All you need to do is refresh your browser and it will log you back in. And as far as, uh, let's see, where can you get, yeah, what can you access when you get, you get a resources page, members only documents, we just talked about that. And then the conference presentations from past conferences, that is just fbi.org, you'll see on there, you'll see conferences, click on that, it's at the bottom of the page, scroll down, if you're logged in, you will be able to click on all of those past conferences. We only keep about two years and maybe three. So if there's something that you know that you saw five years ago, just reach out and give us an email and we're happy to send that to you. Okay, so these are our social media channels here. Um, X, formerly Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. LinkedIn and a blog. So that keeps us quite busy and we would love for you to read our things. So please take a moment and just follow us, like us, whatever you need to do on each of those channels. Uh, we, would, we would love to have you do that and see what kind of information we're trying to put out for you. Okay, moving on to the conferences. Uh, so this is really my baby here. How often do we host a conference? We do twice a, a year. 
in the spring and the fall. And I must say that this is one of our top member benefits. People love going to the conferences. We love doing it twice a year so we can have that time in front of you. At the time of this webinar, the next one coming up is May 1st through the 3rd. That's in Destin, Florida. That's out in the Western Panhandle of Florida. And our fall conference is October 24th through 25th. And that is in Denver, Colorado. So how do we make this happen? So we have to work very hard to plan our conferences. We have to do it about two years out. And something that we have to keep an eye out for is on other industry events. There are so many, and sometimes there can be conflicts. We avoid that the best that we can, but um, other groups can be a little notorious for sometimes booking on top of our dates, but we absolutely do our best to, to prevent that from happening. So um, as far as coordinating where we're going to have locations, we work with the board of directors to make that determination. We'll come up with a list and we'll put that forward to the board and then we'll just find the best fit for um, whatever meeting is coming up next that we need to book. Okay, so why should you attend? Well, it's the only event in North America solely focused on you. We talked about other industry events, but many of those are just, they're so different than ours. Ours is very unique. It's the only one that just food service packaging. So who can actually attend the conference? So FPI's member converters, suppliers, operators, and distributors. Um, it's not listed on here, but associate members can um, attend as well. And we have a program for potential members of the organization. If you are considering joining FBI, we allow you to come for one conference and we comp your registration fee, just the registration fee only. That gives you a chance to just try out FBI and see what it's really like to be at a conference. This is one of the best ways to find out about FBI membership is to talk to the members that are there in, in person. So uh, we hope that many people will take advantage of that. Uh, spouses, may my spouse attend? Yes, absolutely. There is a fee for spouses. It's a smaller one than it is for the converters to attend, of course. That one is just to cover food and beverage costs. Now, one thing I will say, uh, sometimes we have a little trouble with people that are trying to do multiple registrations on our website. Right now, we are not set up for that. We're going to try to change that soon. But uh, we had a few people in error uh, register a coworker as a spouse. So just if you have any questions or having any problems, just always please feel free to reach out to me. I am more than happy to help you get through the process because that can sometimes be a little cumbersome. So what does it cost to attend? And do my dues cover registration fees? So we are not set up to have your dues cover registration fees. We set up the conference fees to, to be a wash because we only want you to pay for what you're getting. So we have, it just covers all the costs for the conference. It covers food and beverage, it covers well, speakers, um, any kind of those extra expenses, audio visual that come, we just want you to pay just for what you're getting coming to the conference. So registration fees, these can vary. The spring and the fall are slightly different. The spring is a little bit longer of a meeting. That's an extra night. And uh, so that one tends to be just a little bit more than the fall conference. We do announce those approximately four months out from each conference. Uh, you don't always have to wait for an email from me. Sometimes I'm setting stuff up in the back end. So if you ever want to find out anything, just go to the website and take a look at that. As far as registration and travel arrangements, members are responsible for registering online or filling out a registration form that they can return to me. And you do make your own individual travel arrangements, airfare, transportation, hotel. Seems a little obvious, but um, some people have had questions about that. So how do we determine topics and speakers? And can I, as a member, present? So FPI works with the board and we develop a program. We review it, we see if that makes sense, if these are the hot topics, the things that members are concerned about at this time, and that's how everything comes out. So, but members are not featured as speakers. We really like the even playing field. So we do not allow one member to get up and present in front of other member companies. Now, if you have suggestions, if there are ever any topics that you really want to hear about, please let us know that. We have our ear to the ground, but sometimes there might be something you know we don't. Please let us know that. Now, sponsors and exhibitors, we do not feature a trade show at our conferences, and we do not offer sponsorships. So, 
what can I actually attend at the meeting? If actually you can go to the next slide, please. Um, the PRA, PRG meeting that Ashley spoke about earlier. So that is for members of that group only. So if you ever want to know if you are, I usually have that on the website. Um, there is a list on the website. And when I send out the emails, I also link to that as well. If you're not sure, you can click on that and see if your company is a member. And the board meeting, that is for the currently elected board of directors. And the rest of the conference is open to all attendees. Every time I put the program out, I am careful to split those up for you so you can see what parts are pre-conference events and main conference events for everybody. And we already mentioned this, but I'll mention it again during the fall conferences. The supplier division and the egg and trade divisions meet for breakfast meetings and the people that aren't me um, members of those two divisions, just they have a separate breakfast that they, um, that they participate in. So once again, conference updates, uh, just keep, if you're not sure, you wanna see down the road what's coming up, fpi.org, go to the conferences tab and everything is listed there. And that is everything for conferences. That was a lot, any questions, happy to, help answer them. Okay, I think we only got one question in the chat and this one was um, for Carol um, about her Ledge Reg report. Um, Carol, where can members find this report? So the report is emailed out monthly to a distribution list that we generate from our member database. So we can absolutely get anyone that's interested plugged in. You can email me at the email address that's up on your screen right now if you're not currently receiving it and would like to. Um, our next report, I think, goes out the first week of April and happy to, to get you on that distribution as well as send you previous copies if you haven't been receiving it. And yeah, I think that that covers that. But if you have any issues, certainly reach out to me. Great. Thanks, Carol. My pleasure. Okay, and I don't see any hands and no more questions in the chat. So um, not that I don't know if you wanna sign us off or if you want me to, either way. I would like to thank you all for joining us um, and would also recommend that while Carol has just put herself out there that we are all here to help answer your questions, big or small. So please don't hesitate. If you have a question, you want more information. We only touched the surface of, of the deep pool that is FPI. Um, so please don't hesitate to reach out to us if you're looking through the website and you find a resource and you have questions about it. Um, uh, those are our direct emails. We do put our direct phone numbers uh, in, you know, in the slides. So please um, don't hesitate. That's what we're here for. We, we want to be the voice of food service packaging and you are the food service packaging industry. So thank you all very much. We will give you 29 minutes back.